I've seen your past shows and I love that, you know, I get to connect with my fans, so I'm happy. I think I'm a bigger fan of your show than you are of me. Go on. Everybody and welcome to our first post-season Big Brother 19 interview shows. We have the one, the only, the winner, Josh here for you guys. Oh my god, it is going to be amazing. But let me tell you guys a few things first really quickly. Of course, you guys know if you want to see any of our past season shows back, they are all over at yourrealityrecaps.com slash bb19. If you're looking for the moments that you missed this season, they're over on our flashbacks page. Of course, you guys are probably watching this show back later, and you should have been watching it live on YouNow. So if you want, become a fan over on YouNow at youNow.com slash recaps or uh, yourrealityrecaps.com slash YouNow. By the way, guys that are here and gals, the number one fan on this show is winning an autographed meatball from Josh. Oh, that's right. You have until the end of the show to be the number one fan to win this autograph meatball from Josh. Of course, patrons, you know the deal. We are going live for the after show after this show for a few minutes. Uh, but if you guys are not a patron and want to help support our shows, consider becoming a patron at yourrealityrecaps.com slash patron. You get access to the patron-only group, prize giveaways just for patrons, shows just for patrons, and after shows with all Big Brother House guests this season. Uh, and lastly, you can always support our shows uh, at yourrealityrecaps.com slash PayPal too. Now, I think it is time for the one and only. Are you ready, one and only? There's a lot going on over there. <laughs> all right. Let's bring on who you guys all want to hear from. It is Josh. Hola, familia. <laughs> How are you doing, Big Brother 19 winner Josh? Dude, I'm doing great. Honestly, it's there's so much going on that I can't even process it. I haven't even processed that I won. It's, it's a whirlwind of emotions and craziness and just love, but I'm happy, man. You are, you have not processed that you've won yet, Josh. Let me let you know. You've won. I know. <laughs> um, I mean, I have my family. It, it, it just happened so fast, dude. Everything happened so fast. Stepping outside of the house, getting hit with it, I won. And, and just all the love that I'm getting on social media, my family, friends. It's overwhelming, but I, I feel blessed and I'm happy. Well, I would like to tell you that this show is going to be less overwhelming, but I don't know that it is because it's really a show for your fans, Josh. So I don't really try and give so much of my opinions. I try and bombard you with as many questions from your fans as I possibly can. <laughs> But honestly, that's why I wanted to do it because I've seen your past. Show. I think I'm a bigger fan of your show than you are of me. So <laughs> I've seen your past shows and I love that, you know, I get to connect with my fans. So I'm happy. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Josh. We are a huge fan of you. We're a huge fan of anybody here uh, who is a fan of the show. And it was great to see you as a super fan and how you kind of started on the show yeah. to the point that you kind of made it to. So let's start getting into some questions. But first, right. let me uh, let you guys all know, spread the word, let everybody know that we're live right now. Uh, click the buttons here on you now. And of course, become a fan so that you can start putting your questions in the uh, chat room as well, or you can tweet them to us uh, with hashtag YRRLive, and I will pull some of those up on the screen. And I should also let everyone know, Tuesday is Kevin. That's the next show, Tuesday. Nice, Kevin. Kevin. Kevin will be I here. I just people. FaceTimed him. He didn't tell me anything. Oh, do you know what you know what he told me? He's like, I can't do the show because I don't know how to use Skype. And I said, Look, I saw your kids all season on the internet. They'll they'll hook it up, Kevin. Let's make He's it happen. Awesome. But He's people awesome. want to know about you, Josh. And the first the first thing that I think uh, a lot of people want to know is what made you ultimately decide to go with Paul? over okay. Christmas? I would say that is like the number one question that yeah. everybody, you know, yeah, wants I'm, ha to. I'm happy I can answer it here, dude, because I get that question a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, a lot went into that decision that a lot of people don't know. It's kind of behind the scenes. And I, I mean, you guys see everything 24 seven, but there was little moments that I guess they didn't make the show. And I haven't watched back, so I really don't know. But 
Um, I knew that a lot of people were going to be upset and bitter with Paul at the end. Also, me being a fan and knowing that there were so many fans on the show, um, I knew that going into the house, people didn't want to see vets play or even a vet win. So I always had that in the back of my mind where I was like, you know, if I do sit with the vet, if I do sit with Paul at the end, I don't think that he'll win over me because he already played and everybody would always say that constantly in the house. Matt was one of the people that was always saying that. Raven would always say it. Um, But besides that, Christmas and me had a conversation probably two weeks prior to finals and I told her, listen, I'll take you and, you know, if you take me, promise me that I'll take, you'll take me if I take you. And she didn't give me that. So that was like, for me, that was like uh, her telling me, basically, I'm not taking you to the end. You have to do what's best for your game. I knew the angle that Paul was playing, but I also knew that I I had my way to work around it. I did. I could have taken him out, but I didn't want to go that route. I built a genuine friendship with him. So I said, you know what? I'm going to work my goodbye messages, and I have a speech at the end. Right. So if I do end up sitting with him, um, I was working my angle and my side and playing my hand, basically, too. So I, I took mean- my chances, and, and it worked. Right. Now, we saw, Josh, you know, you guys, finale night, finale party. We saw a lot of your live streams, a lot of the stuff you guys were putting out. And there was a moment with you and Christmas walking down a hallway that I saw where yeah. Christmas, where you were like, Christmas, you didn't vote for me. And you were <laughs> like, uh, girl, remember when you said that you weren't going to vote for me either? So good on that, Josh. We saw it. We saw it and we liked it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, it, whichever, I can say it from the bottom of my heart, whichever which um, one of us won, I would have been happy. If it would have been Paul or Christmas, we built such a good friendship. I went in there to win. I didn't go in there to hand it to anybody, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. But if it didn't play out my way, I would have been happy from the bottom of my heart for either one of them. The vote, I understand it. She explained it to me. We talked about it in private. And I love them. They become like family to me. So, Yeah. I, I love them too. I think a lot of people like the friendship that uh, you three had uh, going into it. I also have to say, uh, Steve, winner of BB17, also who a lot of people think that I am, and we've continued that lie successfully, but Steve, uh, winner of BB17, Moses wants you to know if you need any help investing money, he has a lot of tips for you and uh, hit him up. Nice. He's awesome. He actually reached out. I had a lot of alums reach out, which is which is awesome in itself. But I had him reach out and we DM'd here and there. So he's cool. And I'm definitely going to keep in contact with him. He's cool people. Steve is the best. Um, a lot of people want to know as well. I'm going to take it here from Anne M wants to know, how is your family doing since uh, the hurricane? So my family's doing good. I announced it on social media, but I know that everybody's concerned and they keep asking. Um, thank God my home- homestead wasn't hit hard at all. There were some trees down and some fences, but everybody's doing good. They evacuated to New Jersey when it happened. I'm kind of happy, to be honest with you, that my mom decided not to give me the news in the house because that house, dude, your mind games, it just goes off. And if I would have known how intense the hurricane was, I probably would have... It would have shot. It would have messed up my game for sure. It would have thrown me off. So I'm happy that they they're doing great. Uh, my house wasn't affected. Everybody's doing good back home, and they didn't give me that news, and I was able to finish the game. Do you think that you would have left? Like, do you think if they would have told you that it was a bad hurricane that you would have considered leaving? I think so. Yeah. I think uh, to be honest with you, I was. Uh, my family was always in the back of my mind. I was playing that game with such a heavy heart because I was always thinking about my family and I missed them so much that if I if I would have heard how bad the hurricane was, I don't know if I would have left because I was so far into the game, but it definitely would have, it would have messed with me emotionally. It would have been hard. All right. Well, good thing that didn't happen. And yeah. we're all glad that your family is safe and yeah. uh, doing well. Susie, you, Susie M uh, wants to know, speaking of the outside world, what was the most shocking thing that you found out uh, being out of the house that happened when you were in the house? So is there anything aside from the hurricane that you found out about that happened this summer that your mind was blown about? Honestly, yeah. the hur- I, I mean, there was a lot of music, sports and everything, but the hurricane definitely, Puerto Rico, how it was affected, and just Texas and all these other places, that really... That winded me. I got hit with that in an interview. As soon as I stepped down, they're like, is your family doing good back home? And I instantly went into shock. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, there was a really bad hurricane. Mm-hmm. And I lost it. I think I went to the PR and was like, all right, where's my mom? I need to talk to her. 
So yeah, definitely the hurricane. There was a lot going on, a lot of craziness, but the hurricane caught me by surprise. The answer that we were looking for, Josh, was the new Taylor Swift album was announced. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Ju- uh, Juju wants to know, what was your hardest day in the house looking back at it now? You know, like I said in the beginning, we saw that you kind of had that rough time. I'm going to be honest with you right now, Josh. Uh, Karen and I from Big Brother Canada, yeah. we did the cast assessment together. And you were my pick for first out. <laughs> What the hell? I'm sorry, what? Josh. I thought what? you were crazy. I thought you I were crazy. I crazy. I know, <laughs> but I'm sorry. So what What would you say was your hardest, was your hardest day uh, in the house? Oh, man. There was a lot of tough times. I think the hardest day, um, I don't know. There was a lot, man. There was a lot of blow ups and a lot of things. I think a lot of things got personal in that house, but nobody's to be blamed. I did my part and other people that I got into arguments with did their part, but it's that house is a pressure cooker. People don't understand how hard it's 24 seven. We mm-hmm. live with each other. We have nothing else to do but to interact and be around each other all the time. So I think just some of the arguments that I got into, definitely the one with the big blow up with Justin Cody, where it got completely out of hand, that was hard and also just, I think when I got my first HOH and I got a letter from home, um, probably two weeks, two weeks later, I, I honestly got in a, in a funk and I didn't want to talk about it. I, I barely spoke about it even on the feed, but I was in such a funk with how homesick I got. And me and Paul and Christmas would just distract each other and we would make each other laugh. But we were having such a hard time just thinking about back home and everything that we were going in that house, that that's where our bond really, where we got really tight. Right. I, I can tell. I mean, I think a lot of people would say they felt uh, maybe the feelings were not sincere sometimes coming from Paul. Uh, what do you feel about that? I mean, do you feel still feel like your relationship with Paul uh, is solid now outside of the game? Yeah. Can I curse here or no? Curse the fuck away. <laughs> Okay, I think it's complete bullshit. I think that people don't understand that we spent, we spent, luckily us three, spent 92 days together and 92 days of nothing but just no cell phone. There's no distractions. We mm-hmm. can't have lunch and be on a cell phone. And then you bond instantly. You, you build genuine friendships. A game is a game. And it, it, for me, I can separate game and personal because I've had to see my family separate business and personal my whole life. I grew up um, in a home where it's just my parents have their own wholesale business. They've done business with friends, but at the end of the day, they've always separated personal and business. So I went into that house with that same perspective, and I did that. I separated game and personal. I love that kid, and I love Christmas. I, Me and Paul text every day, and we FaceTime here and there. We each um, were taking time to basically decompress and spend time with family and all that. But yeah, man, we're, we're good friends, and it's going to continue to be that way. And game is game, and personal is something different. Oh, God, I love hearing that, Josh. Okay, so then let me ask you this, which I think is probably one of the more controversial questions that you'll get. Um, A lot of people saw this season. It was made a very big deal that Paul slapped you (laughs) in the face. Honestly, What do you think? Go ahead. Floor is yours. That's so funny. I get out and and I I forgot who told me. They're like, oh, you were on TMZ because you got slapped. And I was like, I was on TMZ because when did I get slapped? I'm like, mm-hmm. when did that happen? And then I saw the clip, and me and Paul would, I don't know if you guys would see the feeds or what, but me and Paul would always rough house, and that's how I am with my brother back home. Mm-hmm. We always eat shit. I understand how that can be taken out of, you know, people can see that and, and be offended by it, but I don't think he made it with that intent. Me and Paul became like brothers in the house. It was at a point where he leaned on me, and I leaned on him a lot. Um, so I, if I didn't see it like that, and I wasn't offended by it, um, and whoever it was, then I apologize on behalf of both of us for eating shit all the time, but it wasn't it wasn't with that intention, and I know it. And on behalf of Josh not being on behalf of Josh, I'll say, <laughs> if he's not offended and they're not offended, none of you should be offended, so can we let the slap go already? Yeah, for sure, man. I'm done with the slap questions. Yeah, me too. I'm done with them. <laughs> um... Oh, my God. A lot of people want to know, uh, and I don't want to forget to ask this, uh, do you plan on doing meet and greets? Like, do you plan on going around and doing meet and greets for fans? Dude, so I had my first meet and greet in Miami in the Marlin Stadium uh, Friday, I want to say, and it was extremely overwhelming. I had over 100 plus people there, and it was so good to not only see Miami support me, but my Latinos and just to have everybody in Miami. I didn't know how much love we had out here. So I do have two more... uh, 
this month in October. I have two more scheduled in Miami. And then I have Canada coming up, which I can't announce. I'll be announcing soon. But Canada, I'm going to be out there for a while. Uh, oh, good. So I'm going to be Edmonton, Calgary, all these spots. It's going to be fun. I can't give the dates yet, but it'll be announced quick and soon. Sorry. And then I got NYC coming up. It, really? What yeah. are you doing in New York? Um, I'm just going to do a quick meet and greet. Like I'm trying to, We're trying to get it in the works right now. But I'm trying to get a place where I can, because we have a lot of young fans. So I want to do something for the younger crowd and yeah. I'll talk to you after. I'm in NYC, Josh. Okay. Nice. Uh, uh, okay. So let let's switch for let's switch it for one second because well, since we are talking about younger fans, uh, I won't say I want to get this out of the way quickly, but you get you get these questions a lot from your younger fans, and I kind of yeah. want to try and represent them a little bit. So quickly. What was your favorite competition that you played in? Otev. It was Otev. Otev. Uh, was there any competition that you didn't get to play in uh, that being a fan of Big Brother that you wish they would have had on your season? Oh, man, Zingba, dude. I wish I would have played in Zingba. The the greased up with the going up and down. I wish I would have played in that. I've seen that comp. I saw it season 16 when Nicole ate it. Uh, mm -hmm. I saw Paul season, so I really wanted to play in that comp, but I didn't get picked. Oh, are you not a Nicole fan? I am a Nicole fan. Uh, me too. <laughs> mm. Um. Next question. <clears throat> are you really traveling with Christmas and Paul? I see a lot 100%. of people. You are? 100%. And is that going to be like the signing tour? You can't say. Um. No, it's not, It's just us. Right now, we're busy. We have so many opportunities. Well, I have so many opportunities. I know that they're really busy, busy too with work and everything. Um, so later down the line, probably in April, vacation, nothing, no work or anything. But if we meet fans, that would be awesome. Okay, perfect. Um, going back now, uh, back to your game, what were you thinking when you did not get a friendship bracelet from Paul? I was pissed. <laughs> Honestly, um, he said that, that he had his strategy behind doing that, and I kind of understand it now. Um, there was a lot of strong competitors that competed in that company. I think it was a way where, I mean, Cody, Matt, and Alex showed the house that they were beasts. So I kind of understand the method behind that. But I really wanted one, and I'm pissed. But it worked out. I got safety. I saved myself. I didn't go home day one. So, yeah. Well, shout out to Paul, who will be on uh, the show, I believe, this week. He is okay. now selling friendship bracelets with 100% of the proceeds going to Hurricane Relief. So, yeah, that, that's fucking amazing, man. I'm happy that he's doing that. You can buy he one. He has a heart of gold. <laughs> he does. Yeah. He is. He has always been very charitable. Um, after, uh, no, what was your favorite memory? From the house? Fr from the house if you could only pick one Oof, damn that's a good one holy we like cry hug holy shit um damn there's so many whistle nut when he announced when he got that letter from home man that was that was nice and that was amazing my i think another one would be that that definitely takes the cake and just my first HOH, I think that people underestimated me so much. And, and you know, they weren't expecting. They were like, oh, Josh is not going to win anything. Josh is not going to do anything. And then I win the luck, the luck comp. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I wanted that comp because I knew that there would be group numbers and I went for it. But, you know, people say it's lucky. I think it was lucky, but it worked out to my advantage. And I was able to get out somebody that made it personal against me. I mean, she did it to herself. But, yeah, winning my first HOH and getting that first letter from home. Well, some of our favorite moments uh, with you, Josh, were, of course, your dance breaks. <laughs> we all loved um, a good dance break. Of course, we all loved Pots and Pans. How oh, could yeah. we not love Pots and Pans? And, pots and, pans. and you gave us the best gifts all season long. I know! What the? <laughs> all season long, you gave us the best gifts that That's we crazy. could just use. Love. My friend just texts me with gifts of me, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Is that <laughs> it's weird? Awesome. Yeah, it's, a, it's really weird. I have, like, the shock face. I get it every other minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, people are saying that you said you're not going to watch the season back. Is that true? No shot. No shot. I've no. seen... Yeah, I don't want to watch it. I think that I lived the experience. I was in there for 92 days. I know what we experienced, and I can walk away with the last moments that I had with Christmas and Paul, which were awesome. 
And just with my memory of it, I don't want to watch the whole showdown and the whole thing, you know. I've seen clips here and there and YouTube clips. Don't get me wrong, but to watch back all the episodes, pop, not now. Probably down the line five years from now I'll watch it, but right now I'm not into it. I'm going to say you're going to watch it, but I agree. Right. Probably not. Probably not right now. And I mean, you won. You lived it. Believe me, my family gave me the whole the rundown already, and they taught, they broke it down for me, so... Right. I don't even feel like I need to watch it back. Um, d- uh, now, you were a super fan. Did you watch feeds previously for previous seasons? Courtney J wants to know. Yeah, I did watch some feeds. I watched season 16. Um, I saw part of season 18 and 17 feeds. I think I was mostly hooked on season 17 because of Vanessa's gameplay. Mm-hmm. Man, she was awesome. So season 17, I was really hooked on the feeds. But I'm more of just watching the show. And if anything, I'll go back on CBS.com and watch it. But yeah, yeah, for sure, season 17 feeds had me hooked. Uh, Jen C2459 wants to know, do you think it was hypocritical that Mark called you a bully after the way he treated you with the pickle juice? I think that, you know, um, I'm happy that, tw- who was it that asked that question? Well, Jen C2459 million other numbers. Jen million other numbers, that's a great question. <laughs> I think that the word bully was thrown out a lot during the season. I think that we're all adults and we know what we signed up for. Not only that, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for the other rest of the house guests. When I got into an argument or I addressed somebody by myself and people decided to get involved, I can't control that. I can only control what I did. Um, A lot of the people that I got into it with, they would come at me and say personal things and I would just stand up for myself and defend myself. And sometimes I just wanted to, you know, drive people nuts. I could have gone with the whole personal attacks, but I was like, you know what? I'm going to be obnoxious. I'm going to be goofy. I'm going to be loud. I'm going to call people meatballs, bang pots and pants, and make sure that they don't want to live with me and throw them off their game. And that's what I did. I kind of went with it with a lighter sense of humor and just being obnoxious and crazy and loud. It was strategy to drive them nuts. I wanted that. And it worked. I think that is it is hypocritical for people to say that, you know, I'm a bully when I had drinks thrown in my face. I was called. I was attacked for that I'm, a, that I'm bigger than some people. I was attacked for left and right crazy things were said to me from the very beginning. Um, and, you know, I could have gone a different route with it and, and thrown the same thing their way, but I decided to be funny, call you a meatball and bang pots and pans, and now I'm kind of known for it, so it's funny. I mean, here's the thing, and I've said this all season long. You guys all signed up to play yeah, a game 100%. for money. Yeah. There's no bullying. It's There's a, no bullying. It's a game. But... To your point, like what you just said, you used to call people meatballs. Now, Josh, apparently there's some confusion I've heard you say where like you're calling people meatballs. You're also calling people linguine. And we at home don't necessarily understand who are the meatballs and who is the linguine. So, Josh, I would like to just quickly (laughs) run through this with you as quickly as possible. And I'd like to start uh, with Alex. Is Alex a meatball? Ball or linguine? She's, she's familia. She's ne- she's none. Yeah, she's neither. <laughs> oh, she's neither. Okay, she's fine. Familia. So she's familia. Um, what about Cameron? Oh, he's a meatball. Cameron. Day one. I'm sorry. I don't know Cameron. Cameron's a meatball. <laughs> Cameron has been meatballed. Okay. Yeah. What about Christmas? Oh, she's familia. She's like my sister. I love her. What about trash bag? Oh, he, I'm sorry, he, Cody. He, he was he was the epitome of Meatball. Uh, meatball was created because of Cody. <laughs> meatball, okay, so Cody, Meatball confirmed. Okay. Confirmed. Uh, what about Elena? Elena, I love me some Elena. Um, Elena's part of La Familia, yeah. Okay, what about Jason? Familia. Okay, what about Jessica? Oh, she's a huge linguine. <gasps> she's linguine, okay. She's- She's linguine. Listen, girls are linguine and guys are meatballs. I'm not going to call a girl a meatball. I think that's offensive. You get me? So she's a linguine. <laughs> she's a linguine. Okay. You know, Josh, when I was thinking of a game to play, I really wanted to call the game Meet My Balls, but I didn't know what we would do after we used that title. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it was Dancing Amy and Lindsay that came up with Meatball or Linguini. Uh, right. What about Kevin. Kevin's familia. He, 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 I mean, he was going towards the meatball side, but no, Kevin's familia. He's a great guy. I love that guy. Okay, Mark. Mark's a meatball. Mark's Mark. a meatball. He's my boy, but he's a meatball. He knows it. He's okay. accepted that he's a meatball. What about 
Matt. Oh, meatball. Matt's a meatball too. That's a meatball. All right. Now, what about Megan? And we're gonna get more into Megan in a minute. Um, from what I didn't know from what I did know of Megan for the little bit that she was in there, um, man, it was tough the the few days that we did have. Mm -hmm. So I don't know much about her, but no, she's cool, man. She's neither. Okay, perfect. Ramses. Yeah. Oh, meatball. Meatball. We're giving Ramses. Okay. And lastly, Raven. Linguini. Okay. Raven, Raven has <laughs> been linguini I love this game! Now, since we're on Raven, let's just yeah. go with it. And by the way, everyone, Raven will be on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Nice. So, Josh, that being said, did you hear a uh, number one question you got a lot too? Have you heard anything about the hashtag Raven Exposed Party? Um, I have heard about it. I don't know much details about it. I haven't really been on social media like that. And if I am, it's just to see fan love. I don't really pay attention to none of the negative things, but I heard about it and um, I wish her the best, man. You it's do. Tough. Yeah, I really do. Good. So I'm uh, like, do you think that you guys will be friends postseason or friendly? Yeah, yeah, we'll be friendly for sure. We'll, um, we'll, I, I honestly keep in touch with most of the house, um, house guests. To be honest with you, we all keep in touch. We tag, DM here and there. Um, but yeah, I don't have a problem with Raven. I think that there were some things that were said in the beginning that were lies that were made up about me that hurt my family and offended my family a lot. And it made it really difficult for me to build connections in the house because I was instantly isolated from a lie that was made up. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I think that we're young. I think that you learn from your mistakes. And I think that a lot of us can watch back and grow from from the experience, so hopefully she gains that. Josh, I think you're like the model Big Brother player. You went in that house, you created a great show, you created great feeds, you realize that it's all a game. You're not harboring yeah. anything against these people both yeah. season. I just want a whole season of Josh's. <laughs> Thank you, man. That's what I want. I want a whole I season honest, of Josh's. I honestly, I don't know, I, I think the viewers saw it, but I matured so much in the house and I grew so, I gained so much Mental girl, physical. I mean, I lost like 30 pounds in the house and just, I grew up a lot in the house and I realized that some of the things, why sweat it, why stress about it and feed into negative shit. If it was done, it happened, move on. I can't hold a grudge and, and be mad at these people for the rest of my life. That's not healthy for me. And yeah. I just want to enjoy my blessing that I want and enjoy, enjoy this experience because it's short lived. I forget what it's from, but the, be oh, I think it's from the, People You Meet in Heaven book, but one of my favorite quotes is, um, holding on to hatred or anger for somebody else is like drinking poison and expecting them to die. You're only 100%. hurting yourself. Yep, yep, 100%, I agree with you. Which is why I loved even seeing today, you know, we saw that Jessica and Cody might yeah. have taken some jabs at you on the Amazing Race start line, and there you are on Twitter just being like, Good luck, congratulations, what's the best for you guys? Go yeah. get them. High road, yeah, Josh. I, yeah, I actually tweeted like, guys, you guys seen me all summer? You know that I'm goofy and I'm funny and I'm sarcastic. I tweeted some funny um, some funny tweets before that and I was like, oh, I'm a loser, but I, I won 500K beforehand. And people instantly were like starting drama. I'm like, guys, it wasn't with that intent. So I took it down and I just want people to know I'm genuinely happy for all my housemates and, and whatever they got going on, dude, Take all the opportunities that come. I know that it's by season twenty comes around and we're all we're all dust. So it's like, in, enjoy it. I'm happy for them. I wish them the best. I think that some of the comments that were said are ignorant, mm. but I can't control that. I can only control if I let it affect me or not. And it doesn't bother me, dude. I'm happy. I'm enjoying my blessings. I got a lot of great things happening for me. So I wish them the best. You're never gonna make any but everybody happy on Twitter, Josh, I know. ever. So just yeah. you know, own. And I, and 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 luckily for me, I know that people either love me or hate me, and that's how I like it. I don't like it any other way. So perfect. Uh, Susie M wants to know now that you have played and won the game, yeah. which previous winner of Big Brother do you respect the most? Like, do you have any understanding of how hard it must have been for the past winners? And is there one that you're like, wow, I really respect their game now? First of all, I wanna say for whoever has played Big Brother, my respect goes out to you. You guys will never understand. You guys are watching from home. You don't understand how hard this game is. People think it's just competitions and it's just, no, it's comp it's competitions, it's mental and it's, and it's, phys it's physical, mental, and in all aspects, it takes a huge toll on you. So respect goes to everybody that has played. But I think Evil Dick, he had to play with his daughter. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he stuck out his head and he, he fought for his daughter. He protected her 
on multiple occasions. He didn't mind if he, he didn't care if he was going to go home before her. He wanted to. So I think Evil Dick, I have a lot of respect for him. And playing for Danielle, it was awesome to watch that. He's one of he's one of my favorite players. I think I think that has to be one of the hardest things, like yeah. playing with a family member, playing with a sibling, playing with a relative. I couldn't imagine that. I think on one side, the negative is the emotional toll yeah. of it. But maybe yeah. the positive is you also know you have someone you, you can rely on 100% that won't turn on you. Yeah. Um uh what was it what was it like knowing and I know you know we know you started the season with your interview with Aika and Aika was yeah. like flipping out and you loved Aika yeah. and you both but what was it like when you got out of the house and you were in the backyard to find out that Aika <laughs> was on this show a lot having your back but also has been having your back non-stop so all serious. season yeah. I love Aika Wong. Aika Wong, I love you, Dimitri. You guys are awesome. I love those two. Honestly, I had no idea that, I mean, I knew that I was going to walk in and have a little bit of hate, and I really don't care. I signed up to play Big Brother. I didn't sign up to have the world be best friends with me. So, but to have Aika support an alumni that had my back, and she was literally going to bat for me on social media. My, my family and my sister and her kept in touch the whole time, mm -hmm. and my sister told me all the love Aika was, um, you know, she had for me. So, yeah, I love her, and I can't wait to hang out with them in Canada. They are they are the best. You're gonna. They're the best, 100. percent Yeah. You're gonna love it. Um, Janice K wants to know, uh, why were you having second thoughts at the end of the game about maybe cutting Paul and I guess bringing Christmas? You know, we saw you kind of in the end of the show having those one on ones with us uh, in the APSR, yeah. saying like, oh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't take uh, Paul with me to the end. What was making you waver in those moments? Hola, Janice. I think well, what people didn't see was. Christmas was working her angle and Christmas was not pissing people off as they were leaving. Mm -hmm. I saw Christmas bond with Alex and even when live shows, Alex walked out, handed Christmas a flower that her mom had sent her from Hawaii. You know, they were talking and she said, I have, you know, I support you and I have your back or whatever. So I don't know where it switched up for Alex in the jury house. Kevin, as he was walking out while we were sitting during live show, probably commercial break, he, he shook her hand, he hugged her and he told her, you know, basic, he basically said something like, you have my vote. And I didn't get that from Kevin or Alex or anybody else. I really didn't think that I had Marco or Elena's vote. I thought that that would go to Christmas. And I was comparing games. I was like, okay, I know that people are going to be bitter and upset with Paul. And Christmas hasn't really pissed anybody off. But are people going to vote based on game? Um, or people are going to vote based on, you know, because I kind of pissed off all the jury at mm -hmm. one. So that's – it. it a lot went into it, but I knew that I, I had my goodbye messages that I was working, and I knew that at the end with my speech, um, my strategy was to be underestimated, and I wanted to be underestimated from all angles, but a lot of people caught on to my game. Kevin was one of those people, Jason was one of those people, so was Alex, because I was working really close with them, and I took my chances, so yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take this question from Goose SD, but uh, Goose D, I'm gonna change it a little bit because we already know how he feels about Paul. But her question is, uh, how do you feel knowing that Paul called out your you called your goodbye messages to the other house guests cowardly? Or go ahead, I'll let you answer. I'll let you answer it that way first. You know, I think being a fan of the show, I know that the game doesn't stop until day ninety until you walk out those doors. Mm -hmm. The game does not stop. There's so many aspects to Big Brother. For somebody to think that you're just going to go in Big Brother and beast through competitions, you play to yourself. Because it's a mental game, a physical game, and a social game, and a strategic game. And I was working every single angle. Um, I think that my game was very overlooked. I don't know if it was edited or what was it, but I think it was very overlooked. But I knew that I had my goodbye messages, and that was a strategy that I was using to not expose anybody, but to show people. I know that Paul, what he's doing, he's, he's, he, he's not getting any blood on his hands. Well, guess what? I made this decision because I decided to stay loyal. I played a very straightforward game the whole time I was in that house. I was completely myself, mm -hmm. and I wanted people to know that I wasn't being shady. I was just sticking to my word and staying by the two that I promised that I would go to Final Three with. And that was part of my strategy. If, if he thought it was cowardly, then um, we talked about it, and I, I think that he doesn't think that. But, yeah, it's gameplay. It's not, cow it's not a coward move. It's game. I'm sure it was just like a shock to him in yeah. that moment. He, I mean, yeah. it was a shock to all, like Josh, like we were literally like, the, like here, since you won't watch, here was all of us watching. Oh, great. Paul's controlling this week too. We know what's yeah. going to happen. And then we're like, oh, let's see what Josh has to say. Yeah.
And then yeah. we were like, Josh, Josh, we love you. Josh, <laughs> we love you. Yes, go, Jason, go. Take that message to the jury house, Jason. Yeah. Tell yeah. the world. We yeah. loved it. We were like, oh, Josh going to win. I, I, I could have gone, I could have, you know, I could have taken a shot at Paul. Mm -hmm. But once I, man, I was just raised where if I give my word or my loyalty to somebody, it's hard for me to break it. And I didn't want to change that for the house. So I decided, but I can play my game and play my hand too and play my deck. Mm -hmm. And that was part of my strategy to use goodbye messages to kind of put out there what, what was my gameplay. And so that people could understand. Because also a lot of people thought that I was a recruit because that's what I said. Mm -hmm. I never once said... And if I did, I was very specific to Jason and Chris because I told them I was a super fan. Right. But they thought I was a recruit, so they thought I was running around crazy. And a lot of my game and a lot of things that I did in the house was strategy. Yeah, 100%. Um, Dead, Skull, Dead Skull Chick wants to know, do you think Christmas's crush on Paul may have had to do with why she voted for him to win? Did you know that Christmas told us on the feed she had a crush on Paul? Um, I heard about that, but I don't think that was her decision. I think that she felt that, um, you know, Paul probably put in more work and all that stuff. I, I She kind of knew uh, my game. Mm -hmm. If anybody had, a, you know, saw my game, it was her because I was literally telling her everything that I was thinking, um, you know, all the decisions that I wanted to make, I would always share with her. But I think that it was a game decision for her. I think that she saw that Paul, you know, put he put in a lot of work. Nobody's discrediting that. But I think that I just... I think people saw my gameplay too, so that's why I won. But no, nah, I don't. I, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Okay, now I got to ask you a very yeah. hard and very serious question, which is what we are known for here. It is from TP for Elnat, and she wants yeah. to know, Josh, what is your favorite adult beverage, and what music slash artists are your jam? Okay, so uh, either cranberry and vodka, Grey Goose, or uh, Jack and Coke. Okay. And my favorite artist right now, I mean, I like Kanye. I like some Justin Bieber. But right now, I think um, Post Malone. He has some good music that he's dropped. Kendrick. Am I basic? <laughs> Josh, I already told you. The answer is Taylor Swift's okay, new Taylor album. Swift. Actually, no. I'm a Katy Perry fan. So, no. Screw Taylor Swift. I'm going to get scolded on Taylor. <laughs> no, so, I like Katy Perry. I like her. I like, uh, I like Katy Perry. Um... When did uh, Ryan, you got this question a lot uh, too. I want to take it from Ryan Rivers 9 wants to know, when did you decide to split the votes on Alex's eviction? Um, I think that that was last minute, but also I know that some people did it for the benefit to protect their game, mm -hmm. but also I wanted to take the shot and I wanted to be straightforward with Alex. I didn't like the whole blind side on Alex and Jason, not only because they were close friends to me, but because I worked really closely with them in the game. And I wanted to, if I was going to take them out, which I knew I had to take them out because they were beasts of competitors. A lot of people think that they were just Paul tar Paul's targets. Luckily, me and Paul had the same targets. Um, and I knew that I couldn't beat Alex in the end, and I knew she wasn't going to take me to final two. She was going to take Paul because just like me, she knew that she could beat him. Mm -hmm. So I had to beat her to it, and I wanted it to be straightforward and have her understand that, yeah, I'm taking you out, but I'd rather do it to your face instead of blindside you. So I really, I, I like the way I went about that. We all did. Uh, Mitchie the Diva wants to know, Josh, were you shocked that it was Cody that was the deciding vote for you to win? One thousand percent. Um, I still don't. I, I I've heard in interviews. I we haven't had a conversation here. You know, we we talked briefly right when I stepped out, but like for two seconds. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I heard through all his interviews that he respected that I owned my game and I owned half of the things I, that I went straight forward to your face and I said it how it was and I wasn't hiding behind anybody or hiding behind any closed doors. And I was myself, I was straight forward. So for him to see that and respect that, then that's awesome. Um, besides that, I don't know if there was some bitterness or what it was, but if there was, I can, I appreciate that at least he saw that I was straight forward and I had the balls to step up to whoever I had to say something to and I didn't play scared. I kind of play fearlessly. People say it's chaotic and crazy, and I was just nuts. Well, that was the point. I, I wanted to say how I was, be straightforward, and play an honest, truthful, straightforward game. Yeah. And they, they liked it. You made good TV and good feeds. Yeah. Like, people forget yeah. that this is a TV show, too. Yeah. And we like yeah. to be entertained. Yeah, but not only that. You can lie, manipulate, and backstab it, Big yeah. Brother, or you could go the route where you just play straightforward, honest, say how it is. Hey, I don't like you. You're my target. Take me out next week. Let's go head-to-head. -head. And that's what I did. I I wasn't scared to go home. Once I got past 
that, okay, if I get evicted, I go, bo- I go back home to my loving family and a business that's successful that I just started. I was like, screw it. Who wants to go head to head with me? Let's do it. I don't, I don't need anybody to protect me. I don't need to not voice what I'm thinking to mm-hmm. play it safe. And I think a lot of people respected that about me because a lot of people did play it safe. Um, Flack? I think is the name wants to know. So do you know that hands down you would have won against Christmas? Like, I mean, you won, it doesn't matter, but has anybody told you yet you would have won against Christmas hands down? Everybody also? told me that. I got told in interviews, I got told me and um I actually had lunch with some of the other house guests and they told me I had no idea, man. That house well, you guys know we're secluded. And we have no connection with anybody. Mm-hmm. So I had no idea. I was just going based on, I was literally looking at that memory wall. I would wake up at three in the morning. I don't know if you guys would see me on the feeds and just look at the memory wall and say, okay, I pissed off this amount of people. Paul has pissed off this amount of people. I'm using goodbye messages so that people know my game and also see the game that I've been playing. And I knew that that would work to my advantage. And then I was looking at how many people that Christmas pissed off and mm-hmm. I couldn't come up with five people. So, and well, five people that were in jury. Right. So I was like, I can't, you know, I have to sit with Paul at the end. I, and, and then to know that I would have beaten both of them, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, I mean, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's a testament, you know, it's, it's definitely a testament to, uh, to your game. Yeah. Um, do you, do, is uh, Orwell sending you an Orwell? A lot of people want to know. I need, thank you for asking. Guys, hit a pop. I need Orwell. I need a whole bunch of Orwells because my family want them too. I honestly, that's the one thing I miss besides the housemates and avocado toast, which I loved. I miss Orwell like hell because he was a homie. Well, <laughs> I have a feeling if it is, if last season for Paul is any indicator, I have a feeling you're going to get tons of Orwells. I, <laughs> I think he decorated his entire room with those, with Pablo with ducks. Pablo. I'm sure you're also going to get a lot of what our giveaway is for the number one the fan, meatball. Josh <laughs> Meatballs, to get ready. Uh, and by the way, this meatball, is it's meatball sub-scented, by the way. So it smells it like smells a meatball. It smells like a meatball. <laughs> yeah, which is awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's insane. Uh, <laughs> what do you, uh, have you heard? John S wants to know. Have you heard of the Big Brother players being asked to play on MTV's Challenge? Um, have you heard of that? I think that somebody mentioned. I think they tweeted me that. I don't know if that's true or false, but I mean that's that's pretty awesome. I've seen the challenge. I've seen a few episodes of the challenge, so that would be amazing. That merge would be dope. Would you want to do it if you were asked? I would do it. I think I need to get on that CrossFit. I did lose weight, but I need to get on that uh, CrossFit and start hitting the gym. And if I get asked, I would do it, yeah. I have to say, so the rumors are like Corey, Natalie, Meech, and um, and Victor, but I can't see them doing these challenges. Like, those challenges are brutal. I think Victor's a beast, man. I think that he's going to kill I met him during the finale. The kid was fuck. He was cool as hell, and my family loved him. Uh, it was a whole bunch of Latino love because he was Puerto Rican too. So yeah, I think he's gonna kill it. I saw his season. He's gonna. He's gonna. He's gonna kill it on that show. I, he does get it. I. I'm just thinking more. Natalie, even court. They do stuff like handcuff you to another person, and one of you has to rip the other one's arm off, and then you win. Yeah, yeah. it's not. I mean, no. the competition. The Big Brother are. Don't get me wrong. Big Brother comps are difficult. They look all fun and stuff and the goo and all that. They're difficult. They're hard. They're not easy. Hanging off of a wall for 30 minutes. I don't have a wall that I can hang off of in my backyard. Mm-hmm. I don't know who does. That shit's not easy. But I know that the yeah the challenge is definitely way harder. So good luck to them. I know. 100%. <laughs> oh, I agree. I'm not at all saying that Big Brother challenges are easier. I'm just saying you're a little safer on Big Brother, like your safety comes into factor on Big Brother. I think on the challenge, people are uh, like, you could die. Yeah, is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, Josh, I don't know why, but it, but you're frozen. I see yeah, I chat see. room that they're saying that Josh is frozen. So, cool. um, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hang up on you, and then you call right back. But hold on, let me just switch over so that people can't see your Skype. Hold on. Hold on. And okay, I'm hanging up on you, Josh. Call right back. Okay. Um, okay, everyone. Reminder, number one fan, and we're ending it in about uh 15 minutes, is winning Josh Meatball uh autographed. Okay, Josh is Oh wait, hold on. 
Here he is. This will all be... Josh, this will never happen on the edited show. No one will ever know that that happened. Why? Oh, only, but Why? You, are, you are live, so don't say anything bad. Okay. Um, we, and we only have like 15 minutes left, so I'm trying to speed through these. Cool. Um, let's go with... Uh, do you want to... Uh, Rod Carson wants to know, do you want to say how much weight you lost? I guys, this is insane. I lost 32 pounds and I went from a size 40, which none of my jeans fit me, none of my clothes fits me back home. Like my shirts are XL and large, so I wear those. I went from a 40 to a 36. That's amazing, Josh. You should be really proud of that. Listen, slop for a month is no joke. I hate slop, but it did me some good. Yeah. <laughs> um, very important question, which a lot of people actually are asking this. Um, I'm sure you're going to Paul's Halloween party, but oh, Max yeah. Maximus' mom wants to know what are you gonna be for Halloween. He wants me to be a meatball. No shot in hell am I gonna be a meatball. Don't be a meatball. <laughs> uh, no, no, no shot. I actually have no clue. I need to start looking for a costume. It's gonna be dope though. Something funny. Um, Raven's mom. That is not actually Raven's mom, but it's their Twitter. Raven's mom on Twitter wants to know: Did Jody ever find out that you were acting and that you knew um, that they were staying the week Jessica nominated you, but you acted shocked? I honestly don't know if they know, but I think that they played themselves. That was one of the funnest weeks for me, just dancing with Oral, kicking it. Being, I wasn't stressed at all. I trusted the house. And I knew the house, at that point, listen, uh, Big Brother's a social game, all right? And that's what people don't understand, and a lot of people in the house didn't understand that. Big Brother's a social, a social game, and if I showed people loyalty and that I was truthful and that everything I said always seemed to be the truth, they're not going to get rid of me because a lot of people were being, were straight up just feeding bullshit left and right to others. Mm -hmm. So I think that once a, a couple people saw that and they got word of mouth that, listen, Josh is not only an acid in this house because he's nuts and he's always going to throw somebody off their game. But they also thought that I would always have a target. I knew that was in the back of their mind. Uh, but yeah, he's trustworthy. So I think that it was, you can, you can threaten people to vote a certain way, but if people see that you're trustworthy and that you're loyal, they're not going to get rid of you in that house. Cause that, that's, that speaks volumes in the big brother house. And you know, it's a social game. You can, you can attack somebody for a vote when you haven't had a conversation with somebody in 20 something days. So, yeah, you can talk about how it's all competitions, but if you don't got a social game and you're not social with your housemates, you're not going to win, big brother. You're not going to make it far. And right. somebody can't hold your hand through your social game. It's not going to happen. I think it also matters, and this is where you adapted very well, I think it also matters to adapt to the cast that you're given in a yep. season as well. I mean, you might not, you might be playing with a cast that, you know, respects social game less or respects uh, strategy more. Or So I think you adapted really well to the way the cast was this season. For sure. Uh, well, um, yeah, go ahead. Every, do, what people don't get also is that Everything, every hour the game changes. Every hour something changes. So I didn't go into the week with a strategy. Be strategy. I said, I'm going to adapt to the week. And mm -hmm. whoever I got to build a stronger relationship with, I will. When I hit jury, I became best friends with Matt and Raven. Um, not that I didn't just like them. I, I, I like them as people. Sometimes it was annoying, some of the tactics and all that. But I knew that I had to build a stronger bond with them. And they started seeing um, that I was loyal, that, you know, that I would benefit their game. So it is, I played nobody can play a social game for you. They can say they carried you. People could say that, you know what, they weren't great competitors and they sucked and I'm going to go play with better competitors. If you don't have a good social game and you can't socially, if you can't be in a room and have a conversation or get along with people, then Big Brother isn't for you. You're going to leave during the first few weeks. Right. Um, officially, Gabby wants to know, who is your favorite Big Brother player of all time? I have a few. Um, I definitely like the way that um, Evil Dick played the game, how he played it for his daughter, and he didn't give a mm -hmm. shit, man. He played a fearless game. I loved how he played the game. Enzo from season 12, meow, meow. I just, he was just funny, man. He was just a funny character, and he was a good game player. Um, I like Paul on his season. I think that he was loyal, and, and he was a comp B. So, and this season, too. Um, who else? A Victor. Uh -huh. Victor was a comp piece too. I like Derek, uh, Cody from season 16. I have a couple people, but Enzo and Evil Dick for sure. All right, so I'm going to now take Enzo and Evil Dick off the table for this answer, okay. but I'm going to take it from uh, Mitchie the Diva wants to know, 
uh, if you had to play Big Brother again, but you had to play it connected to another person, so kind of like you're playing as a pair. A team, okay. Who would you want to play with? Um, can I choose? All right. You can choose anybody you want, but I'm taking Evil Dick off the table. <laughs> and Enzo, since you already love that. Danielle Donato. Oh, that is a she very was, good choice. She was a comp beast. Yeah. Um, not only that, she had, I mean, she had cojones. She didn't care either. Uh, she spoke her mind. So yeah, Danielle Donato, she was a comp beast. I think that I could drive everybody crazy and she could, you know, we could win comps here and there. And yeah. I don't know if I don't know if Dom would like it though. You're kind of like Dom like two point oh. <laughs> Dom might get jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's it's all game. If we go in there and I'm paired with somebody, yeah, Danny. Okay, I like it. I definitely like that answer. Um, uh, Sherry Blackberry wants to know: Have you played uh, the Jazzophone recently? I have or- not. Uh, my mom actually. She's like, if you grab one of my pots and pans, I'm kicking you out the house. <laughs> and my meet and greet, they're like, where are the pots and pans? Why didn't you bring them? But no, I have not. I have not played the saxophone. Um, he's chilling right now, but I'll bring him out one of these days. You are not bringing pots and pans to the meet and greet. I have to. I have to start bringing them because people, they literally were begging for the pots and pans. <laughs> First of all, Josh, here is where you're failing on social media. You need to start tweeting Cathalon, uh, Pampered Chef, uh, Macy's line. I don't know. All the makers <laughs> of pots and pans, there needs to be like the Josh the test. It needs For to be sure. like, can uh, these pans survive Josh test? And that is like the new <laughs> commercial. You're welcome. I would like 5%. Deal. Deal. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna make that happen. Uh, w- do you plan? Bernadette wants to know. Would you consider coming to the New York City premiere party? Like uh, we have the New York City premiere party every single year uh, for the kickoff of each BB season. And Bernadette wants to know if you'll come to it. Oh, for sure, I'll be there. All you right, guys there. send me an invite, and I'm there. All right, there you go. Um, how did you manage to keep the same strategy that you had um, outside of the house and keep it all season long? So how did you man? Like, how do you feel like you managed to kind of keep your strategy on track all season? Because you really stuck true to what you said in your pre-season uh, you. interview. I am so happy that you say that because a lot of people think that I didn't. Even some house guests didn't think that I had a strategy. I know that. Uh, Paul said that, that I didn't have a strategy. But I said it in my interviews. I want to be underestimated. I want people to think they have control of me because in business, my dad had, has always played the underdog in business where he people think that they have control, but he's making really, he's really making profit. He never mm-hmm. loses. And a lot of people think that he's goofy and he's a goofball. But listen, sometimes you use your brain and it works for you. So I knew being underestimated and people having control of me, I wouldn't oppose a threat. If anything, they would protect me because they knew they had me in their pocket. And I said that in all my pre-jury interviews, and I, and I stayed true to myself, just being myself. Um, I knew that I would, I know that when I think something, I ha- if I think something and I feel so passionate about it, I have to speak my mind. Mm-hmm. I can't hold back. So just being myself, speaking my mind, calling people out on their game, putting targets on people's back, I stayed true to myself. And it worked out for me. And, and, and people saw that and, and that's why I won. And for people that, that said that I didn't have a strategy, go back, all, go watch all my pre-jury interviews and you'll see. Um, speaking of uh, your strategy that PS everyone got him to win the game, uh, <laughs> what, uh, were you, were you shocked? Well, let's, let's start with this. Were you shocked to find out that, um, uh, Cody, one America's favorite player, uh, literally 40 wants to know. I, I honestly don't understand that. I, I mean, I haven't seen the show and I haven't seen the edited version. So good for him. At the end of the day, whoever wins 25K, that's a blessing. So good for him. And I know that it, it, he'll do some good with it. But if I can be completely honest with you, I don't understand how he won America's favor. I don't know who was campaigning, what was being done. I don't know if it was rigged. I don't know what the deal was or if it was just because people were bitter for some reason. But I don't understand it. I think that if anything, I think that there were so many other people that could have won it. Even Jess, like... Yeah, Jess could have won America's favorite, and I would have understood why she won it. But but Cody, uh, with a lot of the things that he said in that house, was bizarre for me to even get past that. I mean, I think K 
casual viewers control that vote. They're not live feed watchers, so they didn't yeah. really get to see a lot of the stuff that he said. But I also think a lot of people felt uh, this season that Paul was visibly controlling a lot of things. Yeah. And... Um, that Cody was the only one going against him. So as a media, as an that, F okay. you to Paul, people were like, we don't like Paul so much, we're going to give it to Cody. Well, um, yeah, there's a show, you guys see three episodes, 40 minutes, you guys, for the live feeds, they see it all. Yep. Um, so you really can't hide, you can you can put pieces together, but you really can't hide what really goes on. Mm -hmm. So and what we lived and we all experienced, if a, if a, if a cast of 17 people, I mean, if 15 of us have to say the same thing about somebody, then it has to be true. You get me? But I do, you know, for them to go against Paul and, not, and, and kind of hold their ground, you have to respect that it was those two against uh, a lot of the house. So yeah, good for that. And if people like that, then good for him for winning America's Favorite. Yeah, I think the people that are watching you right now in PS, hundreds and hundreds, oh, thousands actually, nice. um, they're all your feed fans, so they're <laughs> all on board. You, you, you're preaching to the choir people. now Yeah, when when you're talking to them. Nice. Um, uh, what does, what, oh, would you, would you continue your slop diet now outside of the house because it seems that you're crediting it to your uh partially to your weight loss so would you consider the slop diet outside of the house uh Chapman there's no says. there's no way in hell that i'm going <laughs> to ever eat slop again unless i'm in that house and i have to but i'm for sure going to continue to go to the gym and eat I, I do eat cleaner a lot cleaner now i had a few beers um i've been celebrating and things like that but just stay away from alcohol as much as i can and just eat clean and work out for sure i'm not putting on that weight back Mary Wojo one wants to know who do you think had the best zing in the house? Oh God, there was so many. Who? Um, man, Christmas was brutal. Christmas Marks was brutal, but I think Raven because Raven didn't get her zing. So that's true. She <laughs> that didn't one get was it. awesome. She didn't get her zing, and it was just it was it was the feeling. It was so awkward to just mm -hmm. be in the room. It was funny. Yeah. Um. I don't know that you were on the stage when Julie said it, although I'm sure you've heard by now that Celebrity Big Brother is starting in January. Anne G wants to know, is there any celebrity that you would love to see on Celebrity Big Brother? Uh, honestly, Bobby. Bobby Monahan from um, Me, Myself, and I. The guy was a huge fan, and even when we stepped out, he DM'd me. We've been, we've been uh, messaging back and forth. Super cool dude, man. And, and he was watching the live feeds. He walked yeah. in as... He already knew, like he, he, he knew us. So it was, it was amazing to see that. So I would love to see him on the show. I felt like if I was in your position in that moment, seeing a celebrity come into the house Ooh. doing my trademark thing, I would have felt if I was in your shoes, like, oh my God, people must God, no, love I, me. I, 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 and the funny thing is that the house was like, oh, why do you, they were be, they were making jokes like, oh, you want the, all the attention? I'm like, dude, I thought that. I honestly thought that I knew that I was gonna walk out to some but I thought I was gonna be hated. And he walked in, and it was like a glimpse of like, okay, so I'm doing something funny, right? And man, to be real with you, if I can make one person laugh, even if I didn't win, that would have made me happy. I was like, if I made one person laugh, or if I made somebody summer, then that would have made me happy. So I was like, I saw that, and it was like, that was amazing, yeah. You need to at least go back. I don't know if you've seen it and watch his diary rooms, like he did diary yeah, rooms. I, I did see, you yeah. see that they're He's very like, funny. These people are idiots. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It was very funny. It was very very funny. Um, uh, Yasmin Bizan wants to know what were some of your first impressions of the people in the house, and did any of them change as you got to know them? So, do you feel like your first impression of anybody uh, from the season is different now that you know or as the game went on my impression on kevin was completely different from what i expected i thought kevin was going to be um you know this very uh, just not stuck up but this very um just in his own world cocky guy and then he just he's funny as hell goofy just story for days just positive vibes um, I think that the game takes a toll on you, and it, man, you guys have no idea how draining by day 50 that house can be. Mm -hmm. So it did take a toll on him. But from what I did do take away from Kevin is that he's one of the he's one of the coolest people and a great just a great dad. We Facetime every day. So yeah, my impression was Kev on Kevin was completely off, completely off on Kevin. Um, who else? 
I think some of the girls, um, I think, you know, I, I had an impression on, on, on Jess and I was like, wow, this girl seems so down to earth, so cool and so sweet and all that. And then as soon as the claws came out, I think that she, whoa, she, she's feisty, but good for her. She holds her ground. But yeah, my impression was off on her too. All right. So now, um, cause I can't even believe that our time is up, but I have a final question. Well, okay. our time, our time is up here for the show, but then we have to go to the patron group for the after show. Yeah, but, nice, nice. I don't but, but, either. <laughs> oh, no, but I want to kind of end, um, on a question from our town, which is kind of becoming like our staple question all the time now to end with. Is there something that, you learned about yourself playing this game that you necessarily didn't know about yourself when you started this whole Big Brother journey? Um, yeah, I learned so much about myself, but I think one thing is when you set your mind to something and when you really put all your energy, your mind, your your sweat into one thing. I've been dreaming about playing Big Brother, but not only that, winning since I was 14. So I knew once I set my mind to something, call me crazy, there was nobody that was going to stop me or get in my way. So that also gave me room to play fearless because I was going to do everything and anything to get to that final two. Um, yeah, how, how, how mentally strong I am and how I can... There's tough days in that house where you feel lonely and you feel alone and you become just spiritually, mentally, um, physically stronger and just the strength right. that I gained in that house is amazing. All right, now, before before I uh, ask people where they can follow you and stuff, obvi uh, where, uh, we're going to get into all your social media stuff, but I want to give you full screen to have an open floor to say whatever you want to your okay. fans. Like I said, you have thousands okay. of people watching. Nice. What do you want to say to all of your fans and the people that supported you? This is where we're watching. <laughs> Familia, I just want to say I love you guys. Team Meatballs, thank you for the love and support. You guys have no idea how much it means to me and my family. All the overwhelming messages, fan mail, all the love, the posts. You guys are awesome. You guys are honestly making this experience way better for me. I'm living a blessing, but just the support and the love that you guys gave me makes me makes it so much better. So continue to send your fan mail. Continue to send your messages. I'm getting bombarded right now, but I promise that I'll try to get back to as many as you as I can. Thank you for the love. It means the world to me, and I love you guys. Perfect. And I apologize. I tried to take the questions that I saw you guys asking the most of. I mean, yeah. I literally have 200 other questions I could have asked you, Josh. So oh, I we oh. tried to get to the ones that you guys asked the most. But here's some about social media really quickly. A lot of people want to know, do you have a P.O. box yet? Are you getting a P.O. box? Uh, yeah, I'm actually opening. I have a P.O. box, but I had to close it because it's like an hour away from me. I don't know why my family did that. So I'm opening. Yeah, I'm opening a P.O. box um, um, sometime this week. Sorry. Okay. Sometime this week. And yeah, and I'll announce it on all my social media so you guys can start sending your fan mail. Perfect. I will put the links to his P.O. box below this video if you guys are watching it back once we have it. Now, where do you uh, want people to follow you as far as Twitter, Instagram, yeah. Snapchat? Where do you prefer people to follow you? And I'll put all these links below as well. Nice. So I have my Instagram. My official Instagram is Josh underscore Martinez underscore. Um, I have a fan page, but I'm taking that one down. So follow my official one. Josh okay. underscore Martinez underscore my Twitter Josh M um, BB19 and then my Snapchat is Josh M201. Perfect. And no Facebook? No, my Facebook's private. I have actually a fan page, uh, a Facebook move. fan page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I just have family and friends on my private one. Uh, my Facebook is Josh M BB19. And we're going to work on Josh creating one name for all accounts. Um, yes. Thank you. <laughs> no, I will. Put... I want to I want to announce I'm actually working. I want to do merch. I want to make some shirts with like some of my <gasps> crazy things. And I want to um, donate the funds for like hurricane release. So I'm going to be announcing that soon. But I just wanted to say it here first so that you guys know oh. I'm going to make a limited amount of shirts. And um, all of the funds are going to go to hurricane relief pretty soon, probably at the end of the month. Josh, might I suggest for one of the sayings? <laughs> Open your eyes. <laughs> I think that needs to be That's one awesome. of them. <laughs> and your boot and oh, I forget what it was. The boot, boot, bloop. You can go, boot. boot. boot you flop. <laughs> yep, that that. I think you need that one too. You have a lot of good, and I'm sure Paul can help too. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, sure Paul can help. All right, are we forgetting anything, Josh? Is there anything that you need to tell people uh, while they're here and you have their attention? 
Um, check out The Bold and the Beautiful October 24th. I just got a, a, a part in that. It was a lot of fun. And I have a lot of meet and greets coming up. I'll be in Canada soon, New York soon. And if you guys want me out in your city, just hit up your nearest venue or club or bar or whatever, and we'll set something up. Um, send in my booking email. Sam Josh Martinez, booking at gmail.com. Yeah. Perfect. And I will put all the links to everything that Josh said below the uh, edited version of this video. Uh, I see, oh goodness, uh, Crystal B says, uh, you definitely need a shirt that says, you played yourself. You played and yourself, boo boo. You have to. You have to have a shirt that says that. <laughs> and I guess everybody that comes out to see Josh in New York, uh, maybe you'll see us there too. Yeah. For sure. Bye, bye, everybody. Oh, congratulations, Leslie. You are the number one fan meatball winner. Nice, Les Leslie. Congratulations, Leslie. And we will see you guys all later. Patrons will be there in like one minute. Bye, everybody. Bye, Fabinia. I love you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.